Rejoice and be glad. Rejoice and be glad.
Good evening. Welcome to First Wednesday. So glad that you are here. By a show of hands, who was at our Easter services this past weekend? Wasn't it absolutely incredible? Did you know that over 17,000 people came through our doors last weekend here at Mount Pleasant? Over 1,000 decisions for Jesus this past weekend. We've got so much to give God praise for. Today's a special day for me and my wife. We're celebrating 14 years of marriage right now. Like right now. This, this moment 14 years ago, I was off the market officially like this second right now. And it's been unreal just to see what God has done in the last 14 years. The good times, the bad times, the seasons of my life that I thought were dead ends, but God was actually opening up a door. Seasons that I thought were good, that were about to be a turn for the worse. And it's been amazing to see what happens when you just surrender to God. When you just surrender to God. And the thing, as I've been praying for today, I just want to ask you a question. Are you willing to even wrestle with God tonight? Jacob, he's in the wilderness. He's in a tough spot. And he meets this man, and he starts wrestling with him and doesn't let go of him until he is blessed. And God renames him. And God changes his heart, changes his life. And are you willing to wrestle with God today? The thing I realized in my marriage, in my walk with Christ, as a parent, as a leader, if I can wrestle with God, with things I don't know, with my uncertainty, with my questions, on the other side of that is growth. And sometimes we want a simple answer to our question, a simple solution, and it's really on the other side of that struggle and that wrestle is the growth we desire. And I know you came tonight because you want to experience something from God, but maybe tonight is the start of an invitation to wrestle with him. Sometimes when you read the Word of God, it's not simple, it's not easy, but in the wrestling of the Word of God is when you can understand it and grow. And that's my prayer for all of us today, is that we will wrestle with God tonight. By a show of hands, how many of you are in a situation where you just don't know what to do? Who needs wisdom tonight? Who needs provision that you can't add up yourself? Who needs uh, God to mend something that's broken that you can't fix on your own? I'll keep my hand up all day long. What if tonight God was inviting you into that first step? Are you willing to wrestle with him? Tonight we've got Pastor Brian Adelman from Seacoast Irmo. He's got a word for us tonight. An amazing man of God. I'm pumped for you to get to hear from him. But let's prepare our hearts as we continue in worship today. And if you could, grab the hand of the person next to you. Today, uh, I got in an intense moment of fellowship with our staff members about why you make people hold hands. It's kind of unsanitary. I don't like to touch people because I know what it is to be in church and you feel alone, you feel overlooked. And I don't want anyone in this room to feel like you're not seen or known. And so let's just take a moment to pray and ask that God would move in our hearts and our lives today. Father, there's no one like you. We thank you, Lord God, for the freedom that you give us each and every day. I thank you, Lord God, that you are the source of everything we could ever need in this world. I thank you, Lord God, that the gift of the Holy Spirit is alive and active in this room. I thank you, Lord God, that you accept us as broken. We don't need to fake our way into your kingdom. We actually surrender and give up masks that hold us back from walking in your promises because you want to change us from the inside out. 
Bless us tonight as we worship you and you alone. We pray these things in the name of Jesus Christ. And everybody said,
face for lifelong idle and burning to open up my heart and let you search it to fall down on my knees in earnest God give us courage God give us courage to love the ones who
till our hearts are singing. Older, older now, yes, that's a cry. Holy courage breaking out. We want boldness singing. Bolder, bolder now. Give us courage, Lord. Holy courage breaking To the Lord, to the Lamb, to the King of Heaven, praise, for He rose, now He reigns, we will sing forever praise to the Whose glory taught the stars to shine Perhaps creation longs to have the words to sing But this joy is mine With a thousand hallelujahs we magnify
have never encountered anything better anyone greater than you my king it is my honor to live the song my soul was made to sing Amen. Jesus be praised. I don't know if I can follow that. I don't want to follow that. That is, that is a, a powerful, powerful statement. I'm excited to be here. Hey, before we get started, I just want you to turn to your neighbor and I want you to explain something to them. You are the real MVP. You know why? Because you are here on a first Wednesday after Easter on spring break 
and apparently you had a monsoon today, and you're still here. So you can turn to your neighbor and say you're the real MVP and have a seat. Uh, we're excited. I'm excited to be here. As Pastor Joel said, my name is Brian. I'm the campus pastor of the Irmo campus. Yes, give it up. Uh, you know us because we're right off of 26. And if you go to, for some reason, watch the Clemson Tigers, I knew there'd be a few of you. You would pass us on the way. Or if maybe you want to go to Asheville and uh, check out the mountains, Either way, you will pass us on 26 on the right-hand side. We've got a beautiful building, and it's an awesome time, and you should come and be a part of it with us whenever you come through. My wife and I, Angela, we have been campus pastors at Irmo since 2018, and uh, we love it. We love this church. This is home, right? This is one church. We are home, and we are pumped for it. We have two kids. One of them is on the front row. His name's Roman, and he is eight, and uh, yeah. He's super embarrassed now. And the other one is uh, two. She is, her name is Remington. We call her Remy. And I'm pretty sure she's a teenager already. So that's exciting. And uh, she, I call her my little sour patch because she's so sweet. And then she is really sour very fast. And so uh, I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to share with you guys. Uh, I'm going to read a few scriptures and then uh, we'll pray. Uh, Proverbs 4, 20 through 26 says, my child, pay attention to what I say. Listen carefully to my words. Don't lose sight of them. Let them penetrate deep into your heart. For they bring life to those who find them and healing to the whole body. Guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. Avoid all preserved talk. Stay away from corrupt speech. Look straight ahead and fix your eyes on what lies before you. Mark out a straight path for your feet. Stay on the safe path. Don't get sidetracked. Keep your feet from following evil. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for today. Thank you for um, giving me the honor to speak today. I want your words to be spoken through me. I don't want it to be anything that I have to say. I want it to be your spirit speaking through me and your words speaking through me. And I just pray that people's ears and hearts are hoping to receive it and that it touches their life. And I thank you for that. I praise you for it. I love you for it. In Jesus' name, everybody says Amen. All right, so I got a question, and you got to raise your hand for this question. How many people in this room have been injured before? There it is. I actually have a new cologne scent in my house. It's called BioFreeze. My wife loves it. <laughs> the older you get, the more you use it. It's great, <laughs> uh, it's, and it's awesome. So we've all been injured. Some injuries we, we can't stop, right? They just kind of happen. There's no reason for them. Uh, you don't know why they happen. They just happen. And, and then you deal with it. That's a whole separate message on how that works. But there's some injuries that you could probably stop yourself from having. There's some things that you do that you could probably go, okay, there's a warning sign. Maybe I should hold up. So back in 2021, I went on a campus pastor retreat with some of our campus pastors and some of our staff here. And I love our campus pastors, love this church. And we went on a retreat and uh, Church Creek has a little weight room. And so we were in the weight room. And uh, typically, I work out pretty decently amount of times, right? All that stuff. I try to work out as best as I can. Yeah, thank you, Tim. I, uh, uh, but Pastor Josh Walters said to me, hey, Brian, how many times can you do 225 on a bench press? And I said, I don't know, man. I hadn't done that since I was in my 20s. At this point, I was 38. I was like, I haven't done that since I've been in my 20s. And he goes, Come on, how many times? Just do it. I was like, well, I just ate. He's like, just do it. Do it. So, of course, because I'm a man and I fall under peer pressure when it comes to weight lifting, I'm like, okay, fine, I'll do it. So I get down on the bench, and I get all stretched out, and I'm ready, and I go. And to my surprise, I did it 28, 21 times. I was, I was pretty impressed with myself. And Josh was like, I can't even do that, <laughs> like, twice. And so I was like, well, yeah, we figured. No, I'm just kidding. But, 
but I was in there and I did it. And so here's the problem that happens. As a man, as, as things go on, you go, oh man, I did that at 38. What could I do at 39, right? So I told all the campus pastors for no reason at all, next year I'm beating my record. And they're like, okay. They didn't care at this point. They were over it. <laughs> but I was like, let's do this. So what I do the whole year, I'm working out normally, and then about four to five weeks before we get to the retreat, I'm like, I start YouTubing, like, how do you get more reps on 225? And at this point, my wife's like, what are you doing? <laughs> She's like, you're just showing off. I'm like, yeah, well, maybe, maybe I am. Um, and all the wives said, amen. That's what my husbands do, they show off. And so we get to the retreat. Uh, we get in there. Uh, I don't even think Pastor Josh was there at this time, but I was in there with a few guys. We're like, okay, Brian, you've been talking about it. Let's do it. I'm like, oh, man, I've been training. I'm ready for this. Well, a couple weeks before that happened, I've been doing this training. When I finished, you're like supposed to do a couple reps, and then you finish, and then you kind of stretch yourself out. Well, I got done one night, and I was like, oh, gosh. It was really, really, really tight. And, of course, my brain just goes, oh, well, I'm just worn out. I wait a couple of weeks, whatever. We get to the retreat center. We sit down. We lay down on the bench. I get there. Pastor Sam Lesky's above me. He goes, okay, Brian. You know, Sam's a coach. So he's like, come on, all right. I'm like, yeah, I'm like loving it. Everybody's yelling. It's awesome. And uh, I get on the bench press and I start pumping, right? And I get to 15 and my chest pops. <laughs> yeah, that was fun. Uh, I would love to say that was awesome. <laughs> The one cool thing about it is it's a rare injury. So welcome to the Rare Injury Club. Maybe some of you in here is part of it. Probably not. But because most people don't bench press after they're 35 for 20-something times. So anyway, I ripped my pec. And it was pretty painful. <laughs> and I called my wife immediately. And usually when you call your wife or, you know, your spouse about an injury at this age, you're a little, you're trying to prepare yourself on what you're going to tell her. <laughs> And uh, I just said, hey, I think I tore my pec. <laughs> like, nonchalantly. <laughs> She's like, there you go, showing off. Are you all right? <laughs> and so anyway, we walked through that process. But the reason I'm telling you this story is because if I could have, if I would have listened to my body, if I would have guarded, listened to the guards that were set up on my body telling me not to do something, probably could have avoided the injury. A lot of times we could avoid injuries in our life or things in our life if we are guarded and listening to the things around us. So if we go back to Proverbs 4.23, it says, guard your heart above all else for it determines the course of your life. I need you to hear that. Guard your heart above all else and it determines the course of your life. Above all else, guard your heart. Solomon is stressing the importance of what our hearts are. Now, the word heart in Hebrew there is used almost 600 times in the Old Testament. And it's not really talking about the pumping of the blood heart. It's actually talking about the inner man. It's talking about the mind, the will, the heart. And the Bible is trying to tell us that your whole inner self needs to be protected. Your heart has to be protected. And so what you think and feel ultimately will dictate your future a lot of times. What you think, what you feel will dictate what you do. And if you're not guarding your heart, then sometimes the feelings aren't right and you go after the wrong things. And like in my family, what we do is we have a family t-shirt. It's not real. It's a pretend t-shirt. Every morning we say, what shirt are you wearing today? And whether you can say um, a good friend, a good leader, just try not to yell at mom, whatever the shirt is going to be. You wear a good shirt and you wear it. Like the other day, we were at baseball. My son's eight. We were at the baseball field. And I told him before he gets to the plate, because if you play baseball, you know it's all mental. I said, hey, dude, just wear the shirt that says, I can smash the ball. And he goes, smiles at me. He goes, all right. <laughs> Wears the shirt, hits it to the fence, winds up being a home run. And I'm like, see? Yeah, that's all. Go ahead, Roman. Good job, buddy. <laughs> But it's all about building up who we are on the inside, right? And believing in ourselves. When you look, like for instance, when you look at your neighbor right now, look at your neighbor and say, you look great today. See, didn't that feel good? Like it felt good, right? <laughs> you look great today. You're like, yeah, I tried. <laughs> but it makes you feel good. Like in the morning, I have mirror time. 
Mirror time is when I talk to myself and I say good things about myself in the mirror. And I look at myself in the mirror and I say all these good things. I say, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna tear a peck today. Awesome. <laughs> you just speak to you speak life into yourself, and it, it changes the dictation of who you are. Proverbs 18:21 says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruits. So what's happening on the inside will ultimately control what you do on the outside. Our actions really aren't the primary problem. It's not what we're doing, it's what we're believing on the inside. There's a much deeper issue a lot of times. Our heart and our thoughts and our minds are what cause us to stumble, not the action. So if I go back to when I got hurt, it wasn't the bench press that hurt me. It was the fact that I didn't listen to my body and it was telling me not to do it and I felt in my heart I could keep doing it, whatever the peer pressure was, and then I got hurt. It wasn't so much the action as it was, it was me doing something on the inside, believing I could do something. It wasn't the action of the bench press. For everything you do flows from your heart. Everything that we do flows from our heart. A lot of times, we as Christians or as people, we like to do what's called behavior modification. I'm not 100% sure that's the correct way to change your life. And here's why I say that. Because I am 40 now, and weight doesn't seem to come off like it used to. <laughs> See, it's the truth. And what happens is you modify your behavior. Now, my problem is I don't modify my behavior for the right reason. I modify my behavior thinking I don't want to weigh this anymore. <laughs> but if I would go to the fact that I'm actually trying to be healthy and not think about the, weight, the, 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 the behavior modification, if I don't wake up going, hey, I'm going to have an orange today or I'm going to have a Snickers bar today, which one would you rather have? Snickers, right? I mean, yeah, it's, it's processed, it's good, it's all that stuff. But the orange has sugar too, but we don't think about that as quickly. And a lot of times when you're on a diet, it's behavior modification, like, ah, I can't have that many, I can't have that many sugars today. Well, you could have a grape. Nah, I don't know, I've already hit my sugar limit because I had a Snickers. It's like, not really the same. <laughs> But we, we do these things and we try to modify it instead of actually just going, okay, I'm going to go after things and be healthy. And then you're going to see the weight come off because you're trying to be healthy. So it's the same thing with Christ, right? When we go after God, it's different than when we just don't do bad things because God told us not to. If we go after God, it's different when we build a relationship with him than saying, oh, I can't do this because the Bible tells me I'm not supposed to. That's behavior modification, not relationship. And so, like, I don't just do things for my wife because I want her to like me. I love my wife. I go after my wife. No matter what, I want her to be happy because I love her. I'm building a relationship with her. It's not because, oh, she wants me to put my shoes in the cupboard. I mean, she does. <laughs> but I don't do it because I want, like, it's not like I'm doing it to make her happy. I'm doing it because I know it makes her happy and it makes her feel loved and I love her. So when we do this in our lives, we have to understand that we're trying to either, we're either deciding we're going to modify our relationship to go after God, or we're actually going to go after God and go after him with everything we have and love on him and protect our heart. See, so many times in our lives, we blame our actions, but the reason is because our heart is focused on the wrong things. Now, Proverbs 4.23, it teaches us that we have to be in constant watch and evaluating what we allow to influence our hearts. This is 100% offense and defense. And I believe there's, there's three things that you can see here because we have, to, we have to protect our heart. Why? Because the enemy is trying to destroy you. The Bible says it in John 10.10. 10, the thief's purpose is to steal, kill, and destroy. We can read over that very quickly if we want to, but he does not like us. He's coming to take us out. He's coming to take the family out. He's coming to take the leaders out. He doesn't want us around. And if we allow ourselves to go after the things that are ungodly, it's going to cause those problems. And so we have, there's three things that I see in this scripture that can help. One is this, very simple, focus on God. I don't know a better way to actually say that. Focus on God. We have to become locked in on him. We have to discipline our lives to go after him. I truly believe discipline determines destiny. 
I'm a believer in this. I've been a believer in this for a long time. If you discipline in everything else but the Father, you won't see the results that God really has for you. And a lot of us can be disciplinaries in a lot of things. I remember when I first started working out and not reading my Bible in the morning, I had that moment that some of you may have had. Oh, you get up early to go work out, but you don't get up early to read the Bible. That's what I felt in my heart. You discipline yourself and it changes who you are. So you go back to my injury. For me to continue working out, I had to learn to focus on staying healthy. After you tear a pec muscle, I advise not to do it. There takes some time in therapy. One of those things in therapy is this thing called the body blade. Sounds cooler than it is. Uh, so it used, actually, the funny story about this one is we found it at the Seacoast campus when we took over the new building. We didn't actually know what it was. We told people they couldn't talk unless they were holding it. It was a whole thing. <laughs> then, then we figured out that it was actually like a, an exercise equipment, and it was, like, it was used to help with rehab. Anyway, as I was going through rehab and I was doing all these things, the rehab, one of the things that I have to do now when I work out, before I work out, after I work out, is I have to do this. And let me tell you, when you're in the middle of the gym and you're a pretty decent sized guy and you're just like, <laughs> it doesn't actually scream like, cool. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and so, but here's the thing. Here's the thing. It doesn't scream cool, but you know what? It protects me. And sometimes the Bible may not scream cool for the world, but it protects us. And that's part of it. And so I use this because I have to make sure that I'm healthy. I have to make sure the little muscles are healthy so that the big muscle works. So in order for the, for the, uh, the heart to be protected, we have to use this. And we have to get in it and we have to go after it. Psalm 119.15 says, I will study your commandments and reflect on your ways. I will delight in your decrees and not forget your word. You know, if we go to Matthew 4, verses 1 through 11, there's, I'm not going to read it. I'm going to give you the BLT, which is the Brian Living Translation. Here's how it works. Jesus is, goes to the desert, and he's going to be tempted. He gets there, and the, de the enemy tempts him over and over again. But you know what Jesus does? He keeps coming back with the word. He keeps coming back with the strength. You know why the re Jesus was able to resist the devil? Because he was in tune with his father. He was going after his father, so he was able to resist the enemy. It's a, if you have to discipline yourself to get in this word, it has to become a routine. Even if you don't want to get up in the morning and read it, you got to read it. You have to convince yourself that this is what I need in my life every day. Because the more that you believe it and the more you go after it, the more you're going to see it. And when you get in a bad situation, you're going to be able to protect your heart because you're going to be able to focus on God. And you're going to be able to go after that. And you're going to rely on him. It helps me to change my life and go after Jesus when I have this in, 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 in front of me. Every morning, every night, whenever you read it. You know, a lot of us have the, the, on our phones now. It's everywhere we go. And it's good. You just get in it. The other thing is don't believe the lies. You're being fed information constantly. Every time you open your phone, you scroll through social media, Information, driving down the street, information, TV shows, information, whatever you do, movies, I don't care what it is, you're being fed information. And a lot of times we're being fed a lot of lies. We're being fed a lot of things that give us anxiety and give us fear and give us all these things because they're not rooted in this. And if you go to the part of the scripture in Matthew 4, 8, it says, next, next the devil took him to peak of a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and, and their glory. I will give it all to you, he said, if you will kneel down and worship me, get out of here, Satan, Jesus told him, for the scriptures say you must worship the Lord your God and serve only him. When we are protecting our heart, we can't believe the lies of the enemy. Here's what the enemy does. He tells you the grass is greener on the other side. The reality is it's just a pile of burnt leaves, but he tells you it's greener. He tells you it's better if you go after it this way. But it's just burnt, a pile of burnt grass. It's not going to get you to where you had to be. I'm sure a lot of us in this room can probably think of a moment. You don't have to raise your hand for this one. But there's a moment in your life that you might be walking through right now where you think, man, if I could just get there, it's so much greener on the other side. But that's not coming from the, the, the God. That's coming from you. And it's coming from the enemy. And he's trying to convince you to maybe, to maybe talk to this person a little more. Maybe go over here or go here or do that. And he's trying to convince you that the grass is greener. But it's not. 
Hebrews 4.12 says, For the word of God is alive and powerful. It is sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword, cutting between soul and spirit, between joint and marrow. It exposes our innermost thoughts and desires. If you know that, then anything that is false hope, false joy, is a lie, it will be exposed. If you believe the word of God, he will walk you through the scenarios in your life, and he will help protect you and get you to the next point. And the last point is stay focused. Stay focused. The more you stay focused, the more you take this out every day and you protect that muscle, you protect that heart, you stay focused and you're ready and you're, you're ready to go after it. You know, how many, I mean, you guys live at the beach, you live in Charleston. When I was a kid, I grew up in New Jersey, went to the Jersey Shore, very similar to Charleston, not. <laughs> the beaches are not the same. But we would do this thing where we'd go out. Now I'm a parent, so I get it. I didn't get it at the time, but now I get it. We'd go out to the beach, and we'd get in a chair, and my mom would say, you see this umbrella? Stay here. Don't let it leave. My mom's like, I don't talk like that. She's sitting over there. She see this umbrella? All right. So what I'd do, me and my brother, we'd go in the ocean. We'd be playing, and we'd always stay focused on that umbrella. And the moment we didn't focus on that umbrella, what would happen? We would be drifting all the way over here. And then I would hear in the distance, Brian. Huh? <laughs> oh, and I'd be like, ooh, and I'd be like running in the water, trying to get back. You know, it's like the worst feeling in the world. But if you stay focused, if you stay focused and you go after it, you'll be ready. If you drift away, you can't see the the you can't see what God has for you. If you don't stay focused on this word, you're going to drift. And the more you drift, the more you're going to lose sight of this, the more you're going to lose sight of the word. And then when you're getting to make decisions, they're not going to work the way you want them to work because you're not going to hear the voice of God. You can't protect your heart. You have to stay focused on this. Because here's the deal. You are loved, you are enough, and you are secure if God is with you. You can believe it. You can wear the shirt. You're, I'm loved. I'm secure. I'm worksmanship. I'm everything God has asked me to be. So tonight, I want to encourage you to think about how you are protecting the most important thing in your life, which is your heart. Ask God to reveal ways to help you protect your heart. And it might not always be easy. It might not always be what you want. But if it protects, you think, like I said, I don't want this in the gym. I don't. But you know what I don't want? I don't want this to rip. I want to be healthy and whole for my family. It's just the same spiritually. I want to be healthy and whole for my family. I want to raise my kids. I want to have a great marriage. I want to do all these things in the right way. And the only way I can do that is if I stay focused on this and I protect my heart and I bring this with me and I go after this and I use this in a regular, on an everyday, regular basis. So tonight, I want to encourage you to think about this I want to encourage you to stay in the word of God. I want to encourage you to protect your heart at all costs because it determines your life. It determines the outcome of who you are. And, you know, as we always do at Seacoast, my favorite part is we get to respond to whatever God's saying to us right now. We can go to the crosses. Maybe there's something you're dealing with and you write it on the index card, stick it on a cross, and people pray over it. Maybe you light a candle for somebody that's going through something or maybe it's you. Maybe you just take communion because you love Jesus and you're like, thank you for dying on that cross. Thank you for giving me the ability to do this. Maybe you find somebody to pray with you. I don't know where you're, where you're at or what you're walking through. But what I do know is if you protect your heart at all costs, whether life is hard, difficult, not the way you wanted, if you protect your heart at all costs, you will walk in what God has for you, the purpose and the plan that he has for you, that he wants you to do because you are worth it and you have a purpose. So let's pray and then we'll respond. Father, thank you so much for today. Thank you for uh, being in this place tonight. Thank you for your spirit moving. And I just pray that whatever people are walking through, that they can figure out ways to protect their heart. They can figure out ways to, to know who they are and that they know that you are the most important part of who they are. So Father, we thank you for that. And I pray that you help us, encourage us today to figure out what the next step is for us to protect our heart, Father. We thank you. We praise you. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's respond.
just me and you Just a heart song singing out of tune I remember the simplicity Just to feel you here was everything Stunned by your beauty This is my offering Not for anything that I could give Just to honor you and bring you praise Like a fragrance broken on the floor May my worship be yours. There's no motive, there's no hidden edge. Here's my all, and I don't want it back. Like a fragrance broken on the floor. May a child again full of wonder full of innocence before anything got in the way any dream or any accolade you make it Just to honor you and bring you praise Like a fragrance broken on the floor May my worship be pure There's no motive, there's no hidden catch Here's my Pure thanks, pure praise, nothing in the way. My heart, my love, this.
that word through Pastor Brian Adelman tonight. Hey, Pastor Greg, funniest thing, when the beat changes like that, you can tell who's barely saved in the room because they start moving like they shouldn't in church. It's the funniest thing to watch. It's okay. It's okay. God loves you too. Hey, we're so excited for a brand new series this weekend called Group Therapy. It's going to be so helpful, so I hope you'll be praying for us as we kick off this new series and um, something to invite you to. I'm starting a little small group, and it's called Foundations of Faith, and if you are sitting 
in Pastor Brian's message tonight and you were like, above all else, guard your heart for everything else flows from it. Getting disciplines in your spirit on how to grow in reading God's word. And you're like, I probably need some help in that. If you would DM me on Instagram, Joel Delph. I got a little small group. It's an eight-week study on foundations of your faith and how to grow those rhythms. I got a few spots left and love for you to join it. Just Instagram me. If you're not on Instagram, it's probably not for your demographic. It's okay. <laughs> hey, let's take a moment to receive the blessing. And I really mean this. We get to go out and be it. Because it does us no good to sing and shout and praise God in here and the world can't see our light out there. Because the world won't read this Bible unless they see it written in your lives. And that's my prayer for all of us, that it will just flow out into every area that we're living and leading in. Father, I thank you so much for the word that was given to us today. We thank you so much that when we guard our heart with your word, it helps us to fight the lies, the schemes of the enemy. It allows us to walk in your favor, makes us wiser than people of our demographic. Thank you, Lord God, for your word that gives us life. Help us to believe your word. In Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20, which says, Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we could ask or imagine, according to his power, is that work within us. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. Have an awesome night.